We shall be working on two Easterling warriors today, but they shall be prepared in different ways, just to give you a bit of variety. We will also add some cool details to them at the end of the video, so keep watching if you would like to see how those are done. The first was prepared with Retributor Armor Spray by Games Workshop, and then this was tidied up by using Greedy Gold by Army Painter. To give the gold a bit more bling, the armor and shield were given a quick buff of bright gold with a makeup brush. You can apply multiple layers here if you wish to make it even brighter, but just a quick once over was perfect at this point. Afterwards, the same areas were given a wash using Flesh Wash. This will sink into the recesses of that lovely jagged armor to create our shade. And don't worry if you get some on another part of the model. You won't lose any detail with this paint and you can go over it later on. Also, if you add too much, for example here on the shield, then take the paint off from your brush onto your palette and then pick up the excess by poking it into the paint on the model. The bristles will then take away any unwanted paint. Put that to one side and let him dry. And we can begin our second Easterling. This gentleman was sprayed with gunmetal and we are going to create a super quick gold with some sand golem speed paint. This singular paint will act as both a base layer to create our gold color, as well as going into the recesses to create the shaded look. I cannot stress how useful the speed paints range really is and if you want to learn even more about creating metallics with some extra tips, then I will leave a link here for you so you can watch after this video. And once this is dry, you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Now I use flesh wash for years for metallics, but I just find speed paints gives that more punchy look to the final result. Now for both models, I want the gold to be even more blingy. So some plate mail metal was used to make the edges of the armor more pronounced. You can do this by using a dry brush technique and going over the armor. The flat edge of the brush will pick up the tips of the armor plates and the helmet details. Or if you want a bit more control, then you can go in with a fine tip brush and highlight these sections instead. This will take a bit more time, but it is more accurate. If you have a steady hand that is. Or you can do a combination of both. And this is what was done for both of these miniatures today. Whilst the paint was still out, a few areas were picked out for some added interest, such as the boss of the shield, the central round bit, the pokey out bit of the helmet, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you know what this is called, and also a circular shape at the very top of the helmet. You will see why later. The deep recesses of the helmet where the face is was painted with some mocha skin. This is just to darken them right down. And if you are feeling brave, then you can add some eyes by painting two small dots in the corners of the eye slits of the helmet. Don't worry if you go wrong, as it's a tight squeeze. You can just go back in and add some mocha skin to start again. I certainly did. Now for that red cloth. I just want to show you this. If we continue with the speed paints here, because of the metal undercoat underneath, this will show through, just like our sand golem. So we will switch to the normal acrylic paint range instead to get better coverage. And this was done with chaotic red. The red was also applied onto the square shield section to give a bit more visual interest. And just so all of the cloth isn't one color of red, the upper part that is hanging down was painted black. Again, this was done to add a bit more interest to the miniature rather than just red and gold. The belt was also painted at this stage too with our black. And don't forget the small section that is hanging down at the front of the miniature. Lastly, the trousers were also painted as well as the straps for the plates of armor that the miniature is wearing. I will flick back and forth between the two miniatures so I can show you more clearly the different parts that will be painted today. For the gloves, we are going for a more worn look to them so they will eventually be highlighted in a different way than our black cloth. So a dark grey was used for them. Don't forget to paint the areas just past the elbows between the two sections of armour as well. The same paint was also used for the bandages that lay on top of the upper part of the boots. Whilst his actual boots were painted brown with dirt splatter. And we can also pick out the straps here for our armour plates. Earlier, we painted them black, 
Now we just need to paint the brown in the middle of them, leaving some of the black either side. This will effectively create some shade lines between the straps and the red cloth. A final paint of gunmetal was used for the sword blade and our base coats will be complete for the miniature. You could, for a bit of variety in the army, swap the red and the black parts of the cloth and even have the shield black so that each warband has a different look to them. That would be pretty cool to see. Now onto one of my favourite parts of miniature painting, applying washers. A strong tone was used for the boots to keep that brown look to them and not make them too dark, as we will be using dark tone for the red cloth as well as the grey areas too. Using shade paints, or washers if you prefer, these highly liquid paints go into all the recesses of a miniature, and you can really see this on the cloth. It gives a quick, realistic look to the miniature without too much effort involved. And for a quick cheat, you can use your finger to wipe off the top surface while the paint is still wet, leaving the darker areas alone. Switching over to a thinner detail brush now, here I am using a regiment brush, we can go in and paint the highlights on our warrior. Just a single highlight of Castle Grey was applied onto the gloves focusing mainly on the knuckles and fingertips by adding dots of paint. And a series of lines were painted across the bandages of the boots to give that layered wrapped around appearance. So I wouldn't worry about having any of these lines perfectly straight. The black cloth areas and belt will have a couple of highlights here. The first being a grey. This is our mid-tone highlight and will be applied to create a thicker, or wider, highlight. It may be a touch difficult to see as my lamp is fairly close to the miniature for these videos, but I promise you it is there. Afterwards, a thinner highlight was applied over the top of it. Now, if we just used our second highlight only, then this would have been quite a difference between this colour and the black base coat, and it would have looked sharper to the eye. You might like this look, so go for it, if you like to experiment. For the majority of how I paint, I like to use two highlights, as this gives a nice transition for the eye to see. Don't forget that little bit hanging down at the front too. Now onto the red cloth. We are going to go for a punchy red tone here to really set it apart from the black and the gold but we still want that darkish red look to our Easterling once we have finished. The vampire red paint looks quite bright as we paint it on, but once dry it will be darker due to the colour underneath. A couple thin layers were applied, mainly on the upper pronounced sections of the cloth, leaving the darker shaded areas alone. For the highlights, a small amount of drake tooth was mixed into our red to make it a little bit lighter. It comes out as a reddish pink, and once applied it will give a nice muted finish to the highlights. And as an optional extra, you could mix a little bit more drake tooth in to create an even lighter tone, and apply a brighter highlight to the very edges of the cloth. Here I chose to add a series of faint dots and lines to make the cloth look a bit scrappy and well worn. I mean, they have travelled all the way from the east and covered a great distance for war. With the smaller details to go, it was the boots next and these were highlighted with monster brown. You don't have to do too much here, just the front and back of the boot plus the top will be more than enough to look good on the gaming table. And if you want to make these areas more pronounced, then a second highlight can be added, like I have done here with cobalt skin. This was also done for the armour straps too. Again, just to make these little details stand out. Afterwards, the sword was given a quick highlight of shining silver by using the edge of the brush rather than the tip. And the shield was given a bit more attention, the boss was brightened up to make it stand out, and then the gold areas were given a highlight too. As the shield is so large on an Easterling warrior, and is one of the prominent features of the miniature, it's worth giving it a bit more attention, and once completed they will look great on the battlefield. 
Speaking of which, let's get that little red square highlighted. This time using different colours than our red cloth, to signify that it is a different material used here. Fur brown was painted around the edges and this was followed up by some scar tissue just for the corners. So our Easterling Warrior is looking pretty cool. However, if you want to add some extra details to really make him stand out, then keep watching as we are coming right onto that now. We are going to make our warrior look like he has seen a battle or two in his time. So adding some scuffs and chips to the shield is a must. A few lines of scar tissue were added onto the middle red section that we have just painted. For the gold of the shield, some dark brown was painted first. This would create some contrast on our scuff metal as we highlight the bottom section of the brown with some shining silver. This technique gives more depth to the marks on the shield. If we painted just silver with no brown, we would be able to see these close up. However, from a couple of feet away, they would be hard to see due to the shine of the gold. So let's make some marks on his sword. A little tip here, I have some airbrush metallics which are as bright as the sun and any of these would be great painted on by brush. They are much brighter than the shining silver from the army painter range, so they will stand out over the highlight that we did earlier. Again, a few lines here would be great. Now, you don't need to do this on every warrior, or you could just do this on your characters, and these little details would be great to make them stand apart from the rest of your troops in your collection. Now, not wanting the back of the shield to be just a solid block of gold, as we have already a lot of that on the miniature, I opted for a wooden look. And these same colours could be used for the pikes and the bows in the rest of the warband. A series of thinly painted lines were applied afterwards to mimic a wood grain effect. You could even add some oval shapes to create knots in the wood. These were done faintly as mentioned, so that we can see that they are present, but they are not too bright or vivid as the wood is a duller material compared to our cloth and gold. For some personalised detail, a series of dots were added to the cloth hanging from the back of the head. These markings could symbolise specific warbands, kills that the warrior has made, or just a nice bit of decoration. And speaking of decoration, do you remember that top bit of the helmet that we painted silver all those minutes ago? Some black lines were painted on to form a pattern on it, just to give a bit more detail from above. This was finished off with a watered down sand golem speed paint to make it a light gold colour. So our Easterling warrior has travelled east to wage war in Middle Earth. And we want his armour to have a weathered look to it. To represent this, a heavily watered down mocha skin was applied to some areas so that it would take off some of that shine. Again, just using our finger to take off the top surface because, hey, finger painting, am I right? And once dry, elemental bolt diluted with some medium was again added in patches over the armour. And this created a tarnished feel to it. Again, just use your finger to take off any excess. So we have our two warriors ready for battle. And we use two different methods for painting gold today. Which style is your favourite? As always, let me know in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe if you want to see more Middle Earth content. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.